I'm gonna be honest, this is gonna be a sensitive video and is more than likely only for a certain generation and really hitting on the nostalgia of what this movie is. So friends, I did it. I watched A Christmas Story 2. I sat, I wrote notes and thoughts about what I saw in this movie. And yes, I know about the first movie. I love the first movie. If you live here on Earth, you have seen the first movie. We love it. We watch it every Christmas day. And then we don't come back to it until the next year. So I sat down and I watched the new movie here. Here is a run through of what we're looking at right now. First of all, I knew and I was worried that this movie was going to be full of things that movies do when they make sequels. Rehashing old lines, rehashing old jokes, rehashing old situations. This movie is non-stop full of that. So you may either like that or you may just be irritated by it. I'm not gonna lie, 20 minutes in this movie, I had to really force myself to keep watching it. At first it was just curiosity. I'll explain. So try not to be too much of a smart aleck here. I'll be gentle. I'll be light. We start off with Ralphie in the early 70s here with his family. He's struggling. He's broke. He's got a job where he's trying to get to the next level. We've seen this story before. But it's Ralphie. We love Ralphie. He's got two beautiful kids, a beautiful wife, and it's right around Christmas. Ralphie gets a phone call where he finds out his father, the man himself, one of the main characters of the first movie, has passed away. So this is where things really pick up. I say pick up. Ralphie grabs his family, throws him in the car, that looks like it's about to fall apart, and they go straight to his old home, where they're greeted by his mother. Now, one thing this movie does, like I said, that sequels usually do, bad sequels, Ralphie's doing a lot of things that the first movie did, where he's talking in the third person. He's going into these dream and fantasies that really, ah, you know, I don't know that they need to be there. They're just kind of cheesy but they're trying and here's a positive thing that i will say the movie does have a good aesthetic about it it does look good the film the shots they do capture a very 70s vibe which if you love vintage things you'll enjoy that that's why i say this is for a certain generation that really they're gonna love this movie no matter what and that's great that's grand but if you're someone an a-hole like moi you're gonna sit there nail biting and picking this movie apart i'm still working on me now that Ralphie's in town, he's gonna go visit his old buddies. And once you know it, one of his main buddies, Flix, owns a tavern now. So as they're all in here gathering, seeing each other, we had this feel that, you know, there's like these, these grown adults are trying to have a nice time, but they're kind of still trying to portray themselves as children too, bringing this wholesome family vibe, but still reflecting off the first movie. Don't forget, this guy did porn. I'm not throwing judgment, you do what you gotta do. It's just his character that has the tavern, not him. Flick still gotta eat. So essentially, Flick's bar is where all the town drunks come and avoiding their wife and kids. This place sounds great, I gotta be honest. I could definitely see myself here. Ralphie's in here trying to figure out what should they do for Christmas to make this Christmas the biggest and the best Christmas possible for his family, his widow mother, his darling children, and his wife that he's trying to keep happy. White people problems. So the next morning after being at Flick's bar for most of the night, it looks like Ralphie ends up back in his old bedroom with his wife waking him up and laughing and giggling and saying, did you have a great time last night, honey? This is so unrealistic, it's unbelievable. I think every man husband watching this video, this movie, is going, there is no way my wife would be happy that she was home all night alone with her mother-in-law watching the kids in a house, obviously with no cable, no internet, and eating casseroles. They kind of missed the boat on this one, let's be honest. The next big scene we see in the movie is when Ralphie says we're going to get a Christmas tree. But then all of a sudden, carolers of all things come up to the house and start to sing. And Ralphie's mother starts to freak out. Needless to say, she's on edge. She just lost her husband. She's probably been popping Vicodin, drinking. She's paranoid. But to be honest, this whole scene and scenario is kind of just in the nicest way to put it, not that funny. They're trying to be funny here, obviously. And maybe if you're homeschooled, you might find this funny. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. There's plenty of homeschool people that are funny, but the scene is just not that funny, but maybe you like it, I don't know. And then of course we rehash an old plot scene. We're just doing this thing, like I said, rehashing things. 
This scene from the first movie where the whole family goes to buy a Christmas tree and then you can pretty much guess what's coming step by step. Ralphie's gonna try to outdo the tree guy on price and the guy kind of just turns around and you know finagles him into buying it at the price that Ralphie gives. Haha, ha, very funny. It's fun, goofy, looks really nice, really clean, but once again, you know what's going on from take to take, from word to word. They're trying, but things just aren't really landing here. And one of the first moments I actually started to like this movie was when they get home and Ralphie is setting up the tree. Ralphie's family, like his wife and his children, are breaking his balls because he's putting the tree up, scratching the ceiling, the tree is way too tall, but he's just trying to do the dad thing. He's trying to make it work, make it right. I respect that. I really do. I get it. Mom brings out the wine and the adults start drinking and watching the kids decorate the tree. Grandma has a little too many and starts to doze off. That's okay. Finally, guess who shows up in the movie? Ralphie gets a phone call from none other than his baby brother, Randy. There's that guy. Apparently, Randy is doing very well for himself somewhere that looks fancy and lavish. He's in a white suit for God's sakes. He looks like Johnny Depp in Blow. I think it's safe to say we know what Randy's been up to and why he's doing so well. No judgment, Randy. Ralphie's wife breaks her leg. These weird redneck apocalypto kids show up again. And then it happens. Maybe the most cringest moment to take place in the whole entire movie so far. Just like the first movie, we go off into this other dimension of fantasy where Ralphie's is dreaming up of fighting the bad bullies, the bad guys. The family's involved and the scene kind of just falls short and just, just doesn't work. It's just, it's not good. Don't do that. But then the movie tries to redeem itself a little bit. Tries. The whole family goes out shopping and I will say this. There are some key moments right here. Like I've said before, they get some really good clean shots in this movie. Toy Store, the town, everything that they're shooting. Some really beautiful shots to where it really confuses you because you're like, this movie's not that great, but they're really getting some nice scenery shots. There's money behind this movie. There's just not a lot of great acting, but it's nice seeing the kids put their faces up against the glass, being happy. Everyone likes happy children, don't they? It's a good moment of good feelings as you're trying to get through this movie. But you know what's coming. The exact same setup, same look, suits, costumes. Here we go. Grandma's still drinking. Santa's back with the exact same setup, same elves. Obviously not the same Santa. That Santa's long gone. He's in the ground, dead. That dude was definitely on pills and drinking. But the kids go up to see him. And Ralphie's daughter actually has one of the best lines of the movie so far if not the whole movie. She tells Santa what she wants and one of the things that she whispers to Santa, she asks Santa for a radiator for their Plymouth. At this point, the movie is following the same pace as the first movie, from scene to scene. Getting the tree, meeting Santa, having car problems, grandma is still wasted, Ralphie's daughter gets hurt, and then all the toys that they bought at the mall are stolen. And meanwhile, Ralphie is having a nervous breakdown. Realizing he is broke and he's thinking about how he's going to make it. Should he rob a bank? Should he make an OnlyFans? Rafi ends up at his good buddy's bar again. And this time, he brought his son so he can learn how to be a man and treat a woman. And then Andrew Tate walks in and they start talking about what- I'm joking, I'm joking. To be honest, I really don't think this bar is where you want to take your son. And Rafi's friends, they're not guys you want your kids to be around, let's be honest here. We've got some amazing acting going on in the bar right here. Leo would be jizzing in his pants. Matt Damon, move aside. This guy spit out his beer. That was one of the funniest things I saw in the movie, completely unexpected. This guy should get paid big bucks for this. So my friends, I am going to shut my trap right now about this movie, but here are some things I'm asking of you right now. If I made you laugh, if you liked what you're seeing here, if we're in somewhat agreement, I'm gonna have to ask you, please subscribe. Like the video, dislike it, I don't care. Maybe I need to go back and watch it again 10 years from now. Maybe I'll like it. Who knows? But this is going to wrap up part one of this video. If you like what I've said here, if this gets good feedback, I'll make the part two. Because next we have Flick about to kill himself just to clear his tab at the tavern so he can keep drinking. And trust me, I want to talk about that. I want to break that down for you. But let's see how this video does. If it has 10 views, obviously, 
I'm not going to waste my time making a video when I'm just talking to myself in a room by myself for myself. So friends, we're going to end this one out with my favorite sound. DJ, hit that fart sound. Oh.